So these notes are for you. Please add comments, questions, um, and yeah, um, especially do this if, if you don't want to unmute yourself. Patricia, would you like to just explain the guidelines reminder maybe? Uh, yeah, just realize that we haven't done this in quite a while. Um, so basically it's uh, the, uh, it's just uh, the, uh, a statement that this is supposed to be a friendly space um, where you can be uh, honest with us, honest with each other, um, as long as everything like stays civilized. Um, if you, if there are any issues coming up that anyone wants to raise, you can do so with uh, Magdalena or me, or um, also uh, one of our DCC colleagues, Thoris, um, has um, offered to um, take um, in feedback. Um, if you have that, yeah, thank you. Um, so I mentioned this at the beginning, but I'll just remind the goals of today's call is just to learn. I, I, it might be quite basic, but maybe not. Um, just to learn about the administrator privileges. Uh, we'll just show uh, what you will be able to see once you have the admin tab, um, which different things you can see, as well as explaining that once you're administrator yourself with full rights, which different of rights you can add to your colleagues. Um, so I don't know, again, uh, this is very small area um, out of the MP online, unlike, you know, conditional questions or any of those. But I don't know whether, Patricia, you can take over whether anyone has any specific experience on using administrator privileges. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it, it seems like a reasonably simple function to us, but then there are quite a few people here that um, I, I would, at least in my, um, from, from the experience so far, almost call DMP online power users. So I guess um, uh, it's a bit of a, a, a question um, why you, or what do you think to get um, out of, or why, why do you feel like you need a fresher of that? And um, uh, I think maybe, maybe we can approach it from that angle if, if uh, anyone wants to share, and you can do that um, in writing in the doc, you can do it in the chat, or if anyone wants to, uh, wants to unmute and, um, and uh, comment, then you can do so as well. Yeah, Kim, do you switched on your camera. Does that mean you want to talk? Um, so, so you're asking why we want to learn about uh, admin functions, or, or I, I just uh, signed on just to to hear the latest, <laughs> more or more or less, uh, and maybe, uh, but uh, and uh, I was curious. Uh, if if there's something I, I, I missed about uh, the admin functions, it might be. So I don't feel like a power user in that respect, but uh, so that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's a valid point. Like just, you know, double checking that you understand how it works is, mm. uh, is a total, yeah. total can't, can't talk, a uh, totally good reason to, to be here. Madeline? Yeah, it's the same for me. It's, uh, actually, it's just a refreshing of uh, what we can do, and if we are using all the the, the functionality as as maximal as possible. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that that's great. I think that's uh, also one of the reasons why we put the the demo sessions on because you know, um, though a lot of you are like using it. You, you spend more time in some areas of the tool and you don't look that much as uh, at other bits. Um, so um, using the sessions for, for uh, a refresher um, is what we had in, in mind. And people in the chat basically agree. Yep, just double checking that no one is missing anything. That's great. Okay. Um, Magdalena, do you want to go ahead then? And I will do. Let me just share the screens properly. So I'm showing you 
it might feel like very basic, but again, I just wasn't sure who will be joining today. So if there are more specific questions as we go, please feel free to ask. I'll try to do my best to answer. Otherwise, if I'm not able to answer, we are joined by two software developers and Patricia. The question will be very, very complex. We'll just take it um, after the demo session and back to you uh, later. But for the you, sorry, I have so many windows here opened. I'm just trying to now share my screen. And let's see. So I'm just sharing the right screen with you. Okay, so you should be able to see now the front page, um, very, very basic front page of DMP online. And what I'm doing, I'll just go uh, through what it looks like first before you do have the administrator privileges, how the interface changes. And like I mentioned, we'll also just go quickly through the drop down menu and explain what you can see, which you probably already know. But then we'll just click on what you can grant to your colleagues once you are administrator yourself. So I, I log in and what I did, I'm logging here as a basic user. So you can see currently I don't have any specific um, tab in here. So I can't really look at the user or create a template or really do anything else. What I'm currently able to do is really to create plan. And if any of my colleagues ask me to collaborate with them on their plan, I'm able to do so. so what I will do um, is if by magic, I'm going to now grant myself admin privileges and I'll try to reload this page. And now you can see that the admin tab has appeared. So now I am an administrator for DMP online tutorials. So um, I don't um, mess up any of your institutional templates or um, anything you are working on. So if you do not have administrator privileges, you would need to get in touch with us at DMP online at dcc.ac.uk. So we can, we can grant you this extra tab. And once you have access to this app, uh, like I mentioned, you would be able to see your user plans, in here and you know the feedback requested in here you would be able to create your own templates through here and customize the funder templates as well you would be able to create your own guidance or guidance list and we'll be having demo tutorials on each of these functionalities um, down the down the line as we go throughout the year I think we already done probably a tutorial on organizational details and how you can switch on the request feedback and add your schools and departments here. You can also look up the users through this step and we'll be coming back through he here because this is how you can also grant the administrator rights and you can check also the usage of your template and um, plans created and uh, users joined through the last year. So as an administrator, if you want to add more administrator to your team, you can just look them up through here. So hopefully they already have an account in DMP online. If not, just create, uh, ask your colleagues to create an account in DMP online. And what do you do? Uh, you will be able to find them in here either through their name and surname. I do have quite a few accounts here. Um, but it can be also through the email address. So let me just use this embarrassing old email address I have here. So now I found my account in here and I have decided that I want to grant myself some privileges. So here you can see the step privileges and as an administrator yourself, you can already click here to edit. And you have various options here. Um, you can either click here, the top one, uh, which will grant all of the administrator rights um, to your colleague, but it might be that your team works differently. And I know that, for example, in Netherlands, um, they have loads of data stewards, but maybe they don't necessarily want everyone to be able to create a template. So maybe the data steward should be just able to review the plan but maybe you don't want them to manage the template or be able to assign other privileges. So 
We'll now go through all of these and I'll just explain what these means in a case you don't know. So like I said, by clicking the top one, the other user will just have exactly the same rights like you already have. Um, but we will now go through each individual one. So manage user privileges, it is really as simple as it really writes in here. User to who you will just assign this one will be able to assign privileges to others in your organization. And a good thing to remember is that your colleagues will only be able to assign the privileges they have themselves. So if only this one is sticked, uh, it's not really useful because um, there is nothing else they would be able to help their colleagues with. But if you want to have a colleague that can assign further privileges to your colleagues, um, and for example, it would be to review plans and I don't know, manage the use of API, you can just take these three and your colleague will be able to assign the colleague the use of API and review plans. I hope this is hopefully quite clear. I think having just this functionality ticked by itself, it wouldn't make a lot of difference. You want to combine this with some other features, um, uh, functionalities you want your colleagues to manage. Now, manage templates. Again, um, it is a quite self-explanatory. If you grant your colleague just this one, your colleague will be able to create new organizational template edit existing ones and customize founder templates. So if you really want to create a team where, you know, just very few people are actually able to manage the templates, this might be a way to actually maybe exclude other people rather than, you know, just taking this one. It might be that you will decide that your colleagues will have access to everything, but maybe you want just two people to manage templates. So it's really a way for you to control um, how many people will be able to really manage the template. There are pros and, pro pros and cons for having more people managing the template or not managing the template. I think the main thing is really the version control and just ensuring you know all works as you wish and there are not too many mistakes happening in your team, but this is really um, on your organizational, this depends on your organizational privilege, um, systems and what you wish to do. So um, I will just move to the manage guidance. Um, we'll have a tutorial um, or demo about the guidance. I don't think we already had one, um, but through, through this, you would be able to create your own guidance. So for example, if there is a founder template, um, you don't need to customize the template itself but you can just create a guidance that will be appearing next to the template. I'll go more into the detail um, in, in the demo session where we'll be explaining this more into, in, this, in the detail, but I, I think this is very useful functionality, um, not often used and it can just make your customization of founder templates, I think long-term wise, maybe easier. Use of API, um, again, I'm not sure how many of you are using API, uh, but this allows your colleagues um, through their profile, and I'll actually show to you how it looks like now, um, to get API token and grants rights to harvest info from the tool. So I'm not using API myself. I think it's magical. It's like unicorns to me, but if you have someone that is able to use API, if they go through their profile and they have been granted this right, this is the API token and information they would be able to see. And we, we offer the how to use API guidance, which we have in here as well. So I'll, I'll just go back to the user so we can see what else is there. Um, what do I do, sorry. Man. We'll have to change token now, Magdalena. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay, so another one, manage organizational details. So through this, um, your colleagues will be able to edit their organizational details, such as name, URLs, contact email, and logo. So again, it's what we have seen 
at the beginning. So basically with this feature, they'll have access to this interface, you know, and you can just add your links and contact emails and switch on and off the request feedback and at the schools and departments. I'll just go back um, again to the user. The last one, which we currently have, and again, after the session, we are always open for further feedback and suggestion. But the last one, which we currently have um, is to review plans. And I think this is one of the latest additions, I think from a year and a half ago, if I'm not mistaken. And this allow your colleagues to provide feedback on the plans through the comment section. So again, I think this is, mainly used in Netherlands um, because there are big teams of the data stewards. But if you have colleagues where you just want to comment on the plans and all the other functions um, you don't wish them to have access to, this might be a good way really to control um, how it works in your team. So for the queue, I think this is all I wanted to show you today, but we are open for questions. I'll just stop sharing my screen now. Um, there's one that popped up in the, um, in the Google Doc and uh, it makes a lot of sense to me and I don't know why we haven't thought about it yet, um, but it's like, uh, how would you, or could you search for users that you have assigned particular privileges in the past, I guess, as a regular um, job as the organizational admin uh, just to make sure, you know, you get an overview and you know who actually has access to the system on various levels. Um, and the answer I th as at the moment, uh, no, you can't for the interface, but I totally understand that that is something that would be useful. Um, and we'll make a note of that <laughs> because it, it, it sounds like almost too straightforward and I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Um, Why well, that isn't the case yet? I'm not entirely sure how we how we would get uh, the particular privileges in the table, but at least you know making that column in the users table sortable by people that have admin privileges, and you know assuming that you haven't assigned those to 20 people in your institution, but maybe rather five, and then like you can just do a quick click to understand who has which privileges, but at least like, yeah, sorting sorting the table um, by privileges um, should be, um, um, should definitely be doable. And then, yeah, that's the other point um, that uh, we have queries or have gotten queries around um, is, um, if, if privileges can only be granted or for certain subsections. So um, I guess, uh, or uh, I, I remember that I think some of the colleagues uh, in the Netherlands asked for the review plan function um, to be restricted to certain departments so that the, the data stewards um, for certain departments only see those plans. Um, and that's, another point that is, yeah, is an idea on our list. Um, but I have to say, um, I'm not entirely sure how, how or what the implications are on making that more granular. I don't know if any of our uh, developers wants to chime in uh, on, the, on the scale of, um, of those changes, but um, yeah. Definitely noted as something something to look at. I would say that um, sorry, uh, Marta Nicholson, um, one of the developers. I would say that um, it's something we definitely will probably add to our wish list, and uh, we will look into it um, as in in the near future. But. Um, it sounds like a, a, a wise um, approach as well. So it's just a question of uh, um, getting it into the 
our um, kind of list of to do's and prioritize and make sure that there's nothing else that, um, that needs to be done before that. But it's definitely um, something that is worth adding as a, um, an issue. So, sorry, not an issue, uh, desirable. Yeah, oh, great. Thank you, Marta, for that. Uh, Joachim, you had your hand up. I tried to raise it in, in, in the participant, but it didn't work. Uh, I, I did learn something that I hadn't thought about. So we have uh, turned off the request feedback since we're currently not sure where we'll be able to, but we, we sometimes get feedback anyway, uh, or I mean uh, requests uh, in other ways. But uh, I was just thinking, since we have not tried this, if we turn it on, will those that have requested feedback, will we be able to comment in the, in the, in the DMPs in the same way as if they had uh, chosen to share it with us? Yeah, that's basically what the review yeah. um, functionality does. Okay. Okay. And... Um, we, we, I think so the last session or the one before, but the, the, like one of these demo sessions basically um, went through the request feedback functionality. Okay. Um, so uh, because now I see when I didn't turn on just plans, uh, uh, I, I cannot, I can see them, but uh, uh, I cannot uh, do anything. No, uh, but like for if you, um, yeah, for those that uh, has been requested feedback uh, yeah. on that basically, um, Okay. Allows you as the a reviewer then to to mm -hmm. comment on top. Great. Um, thank you. There's a question in the document on plans to improve the the guidance functionality. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we have uh, on top of. Uh, or, or on the list uh, uh, from the top of my head, but um, I don't know, Magdalena, is this something that we can look on and look at in one of the upcoming demo sessions and go in uh, into in a bit more detail? Because it's like, you know, improve is quite like, you know, has a, has a range of options that could be done there. <laughs> Well, well, maybe it's just my, uh, that is uh, my question. It's not maybe not improve, not the right term, but or to extend. Um, what we um, what we uh, well, at the moment we don't use the guidance functionality um, um, because we have now are now um, have an, our own institutional template has many questions. And uh, also questions that are from the same topic or theme. And when you tag your question then with these topics, you get a lot of questions with the same theme. And then every time when you um, when you when the your the questions are showed, then you get every time the same guidance uh, repeated. Do you mean the other guys what I mean? I am. Yeah. And yeah, because there are loads just, you know, I think it's like 10 categories or so, like, so it's very broad around budgets or ethics. Yeah. Or and we have a lot of questions about privacy issues. Mm -hmm. And it would be maybe an idea, I'm not sure if you could, could consider it, if it would be possible for institutions to, to create their own tags, for example. Uh, it, it might be, yeah, it might be. So that you make this a little bit more granular for uh, privacy and then um, uh, consent forms or something like that. No, that's that's a that's a valid point. I think um, I was just, as we speak, I was just looking what is going to be our next demonstration. And it is actually just to, what was it? Um, checking the usage, but I can I can just mark um, the guidance to be the follow up in, in March, and we can then revisit this in more detail. So I think just gathering more how we would want this to function, you know, well, basically now we can have two more months to also think about it in the meantime. Um, it's a valid point. 
um, because these categories are quite broad. Uh, again, this is something we would also need to discuss with our software developers because I have no idea how difficult or not it would be to make this more granular. But you're absolutely right. Um, the categories are very broad and they can appear next to 20 questions then even though you want something more specific to be there, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi there. Um, it's uh, Rick Haddock here, one of the software developers. Just to comment on that. Um, I think uh, it's perfectly possible to revisit how the guidance is done. Um, there are implications for, I mean, if we, if we let people invent their own tags, then I think that's feasible, but uh, we would need to look into the implications of that for the rest of the tool, because um, that would then, I think we were trying to avoid an explosion of tags. If you know. um, but if you can think through the functionality that you would really like to see and make a note of that, then that would be really interesting to, to see for us going forward. And I think it's something that we would certainly be happy to go back and revisit. Thank you, Ray. Joachim, um, follow up. There. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to add to what Madeleine said, because we, we are also developing our own template and, and for the same reason we don't use the guidance because it would, it creates a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, junk <laughs> to, to, be a, yeah. to be blunt, uh, in the output also. Uh, you get all the, the the guidance in the output via the API, and it makes it more difficult to process the uh, the output. Uh, but I was thinking at the same time that because there is another feature that I'm we would like, uh, or at least we haven't understood how to do that, and that is to since our template is supposed to be uh, two phases, an initial DMP like you have in DCC uh, and then a, a final or a full. And I have not yet understood how I could copy from uh, the first phase to the next one because I, I want to repeat uh, a lot of the stuff. And then I thought maybe I could use the, uh, if I can make my own guidance, uh, that would uh, help. So I could transfer that to, to the full phase. But uh, I understand now that uh, I would get all the other uh, guidance as well, not only my own. So it would still be a lot of uh, unnecessary things. Uh, so, so, so either way, uh, either if it would be more e easy to just copy one face, one template uh, and have it in the same template, but in another face, or uh, that you make, as Madeleine suggested, the guidance that you can make your own tags and have it more granular. Okay, yeah. That, that sounds like templates and guidance are definitely good follow-up sessions mm -hmm. <laughs> to, yeah. for, for this one. So we, mm -hmm. we can talk through, through all the details and um, uh, yeah, collect ideas of, um, of what, what people would, would like to see. So um, yeah, something we need to look at, noted. Are there any any other questions around the assigning privileges? I mean, I, I I guess it's like that you know that part is pretty straightforward, but opens a whole can of work worms of what exactly people can do now that you've given them um, uh, access to or extended access to DMP online. So. 
Anything else that uh, anyone wants to wants to raise on this aspect? No. Good. Thank thank you for the feedback. The the one on the um, on the on the searching for people. That one is uh, I think a one that's an aspect that is uh, pretty straightforward to do. Um, so. Um, yeah, that, that will go on the list and then we'll pick up uh, more around guidance and templates uh, in, in one of the upcoming sessions. And I think there are probably quite a few ideas from, from you out there how, how that can be improved. Um, so we can have a longer discussion around those then. Anything else from you, Magdalena? No, I think we can just move on and we can just go through the closing points. So um, Phil, sorry, my birdie's just now chirping very loudly. Feel free to invite others and sh share recording and notes. Uh, we'll be sharing these after the sessions when I process these as well. Um, and please uh, feel free to add the notes and these are really for you. Um, so share them with, with your colleagues. Um, and there are ways to keep up to date with the NP Online news. Um, I do understand though, you know, these things get very often missed in the emails or on Twitter, but we do have a Twitter account in a case you're not following us and also LinkedIn account. And we do have a monthly newsletter um, and a community mailing list. Um, I will ask my colleague Patricia to share these in the chat with you. Um, and I think this is a wrong link. I think this is a link actually from our last demo session, but we also have a YouTube playlist already created with these demo sessions. So feel free. I don't know whether you can follow the YouTube playlist or um, what you need to click on, but these will be added gradually to the list. And our next DMP session will be on the 24th of February half past then in the UK time. And um, for the next session, we'll be looking at review usage and usage dashboard. Um, there are already um, links uh, how you can join, but as long as you have access to this document, all of these are always added in the document as well. Um, and I edit suggestion for the following session for March and April around the guidance and phases. Uh, so if you think of uh, some session that you would find useful, feel free to also edit to this document or just drop us an email on the MP online at dcc.ac.uk. I will also try to probably just run some quick survey again, just to see where is the interest. I ran one survey in autumn time, um, just to see what will be the session for the upcoming months, but we can revisit and just see um, where is the biggest interest. So we know what to focus on to start with. But I think this is all for me. And I would like to say many thanks to Patricia, uh, Ray, Marta, and Diana, my colleagues, for joining me and helping me today. And many thanks to you for all of your wonderful ideas and for listening to me. I hope um, you still uh, found this interesting and learned something new, or at least um, refreshed your memory on how these features work. And I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.